Hey, what's up guys, it's Tech Confusion and welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to be teaching you how to color correct inside of Premiere Pro CC 2019. If you're new to color correcting, today I'm just going to be showing you some very basic tips inside of Premiere and basically the art of color correcting. If you're coming back for a refresher on how to color correct in Premiere, this video will be perfect for you as well. So let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so when you first get inside of Premiere Pro, the first thing you're going to want to do is go to your color tab. If you don't see that up here, you're going to go to window, workspaces, and color. That'll bring you to your color workspace. The color workspace consists of the Lumetri color panel over here and the Lumetri scopes panel over here. If you don't see those, you can come up to window and customize your own workspace and add whichever windows you want. So in my timeline, I have two different clips that have problems that need to be color corrected. So I'm going to show you how to fix these. Now, just to quickly go over what the Lumetri Scopes window offers, basically right down here, you have a histogram, a waveform, and a vector scope. Basically, these different scopes and graphs help you read your video so you know what's going on. For example, if you don't have a super color accurate monitor, you can go off these scopes and it will help you know what's going on inside your video. Now, when it comes to the waveform over here, this is basically a representation of your video in the different color channels. So if I play this video here, you can see it moves around basically matching the video. This is telling you which color channels are too high or too low and which are more saturated over the others. Using the vector scope, you can help balance the color in your video and you want it to end up mostly around the center. Now the histogram basically shows you luminosity and exposure. So if things are too bright or too dark, it will show up on here. All right, so those are the Lumetri scopes. And if you wanna hide or show any of these, you can just right click anywhere in this window and you can just check and uncheck the different scopes. Now on the right side of the color workspace, we have our Lumetri color panel. And this is basically where you'll be making all of your edits. And I quickly wanna make this clear. There is a difference between color correction and color grading. Basically, color correction is taking video with color that may not be exactly accurate, such as this very warm clip, and basically turning it into what would look more realistic. Now, color grading, on the other hand, is more creative, and it usually happens after you're done color correcting. On this first tab, like I said, this is where you'll do most of your color correction, and on the tabs that follow is mostly color grading and creative decisions. I'll talk about each of these tabs briefly, but I'm not going to go too in-depth because it's not really color correction at that point. So let's go ahead and jump into our basic correction tab here, and we can start making some tweaks. So as we can see, this clip is super warm, and the first thing that I do when I see a video is I try to get the white balance looking more accurate and realistic. So this shot does look very warm, so the first thing I'm going to do is come to the temperature slider and basically just move this to be a more cooler tone. Now that the shot's looking a little better, I'm going to come down to the tint and just give it a little bit more magenta. So as you can see, when I make these adjustments, your scopes will also adjust. So I'll just move this back and forth and you can see that the red level basically increases and decreases. Now, if you're new to color correction, it may be helpful if you use the automatic white balance selector. Basically, all you have to do is select this tool right here and find a white point on the video. So in this case, it'd be a hat. And then you just hover right over that and select it. Premiere will do its best to automatically color correct your footage from there, and then you can tweak it using the temperature and tint sliders. So if I swap between the final effect and the previous original look, you'll see that it already looks much better. Now, if we just come down to the exposure slider right here, I'm just gonna bring it up a little bit. And this is where your histogram really helps to make sure that you don't overexpose things. Um, because if you do overexpose it, it will end up looking very bad as you can see right here. But you can see as I move this slider back and forth that your histogram changes and updates. So somewhere right around there looks good to me. And I think this is missing a little bit of saturation. So I'll just bring that up just a hair. So if we come over to our waveform for a second here, you'll see that we still do have a lot of red in our image, but that's mostly because she's wearing a lot of red in the shot. All right, so I think that's all for the shot. And as I said before, the really only thing that was wrong with this clip was the white balance. It was just super warm. We just needed to give it a little bit more of a cool temperature. All right, so the next clip here we have, it's a super flat image, and this is what you'll see a lot if you shoot in log on a camera. Now, when I use the term log, it's basically a type of color science that a lot of cinematographers use so that they can come back later and fix their shot, enhance it, and color correct it in post-production. The benefits of shooting in log is that you can tweak and adjust it later as opposed to shooting it with the standard color science and basically what you shoot is what you get. You also get a lot more dynamic range and you don't overexpose your highlights as much as you would if you were shooting normally. All right, so with this shot here, we can see that it's a super flat image and basically the contrast needs to come up in the saturation as 
as well. And we can make some tweaks to the highlights and shadows. If I go ahead and move the contrast slider back and forth, you can see what happens to our histogram. Basically, it's just widening and narrowing. So this shot basically needs a lot more contrast than it already has. And the way I'm going to first do this is basically messing around and tweaking with my shadows and highlight slider. We can just bring the shadows down here and pull in the highlights a little bit. Then we can go back up to contrast and just give it a little bit more contrast. The shot also needs a little bit more saturation as well because it was shot in log. And we can see it's already looking better. I'll go ahead and just toggle it on and off. And you can see one looks very flat and the other one looks what you'd see like in a film. And I'll go ahead and give it a playthrough. Now when it comes to this clip, the white balance does look good, although I would say it's a little bit warm, but honestly, because it is a, either a sunset or a sunrise, it's to be expected, but I would probably just bring back the warmth just a little bit, kind of like right around here, and maybe give it a little bit more contrast as well. Now the cool thing is you can come down to your whites and black sliders right here, and if you're missing a lot of your footage over here because it's getting so dark because you pulled down your shadows to give it more contrast, you can just go ahead and bump up the blacks a little bit and you'll start gaining all that footage back. All right, so that's probably all I would do for this image right here, and I think it looks pretty good. I will mention that on this basic correction tab right here, you can input your own LUT, which is basically a lookup table, and basically all this does is apply a quick preset uh, to color correct your footage. And the only times this looks really good is when you get a LUT that looks good for your camera or you make your own. So that's the basics of color correcting inside of Premiere Pro. Now, if we go and look at the other tabs here, you're going to get into more of a color grading aspect. On the creative tab here, you're basically adding your own creative style or look. Under this list, you can import or use presets to add a special look to your shot. And again, this type of color grading is very subjective because everyone has their own opinion when it comes to how their footage should look. And as you can see, there's a ton of pre-built presets that you can find in Premiere Pro. All right, so for the next tab, we have curves. And the reason I'm not going to talk too much about curves is this is a very advanced tool that you can learn later down the road of color correcting. This is basically where you can target each color channel and make adjustments to your shadows and highlights within that color channel. As you can see here, I can take the red channel. I can either decrease it in my shadows or I can decrease in the highlights. I mean, obviously you can go overboard with this as well, which is why I'm not going to talk too much about this because I don't want to confuse you. Basically, you really only need to know the basic correction tab and you don't really need to get into curves too much. All right, so next we have color wheels and match. And again, I'm not going to talk about this too much either, but under this, we do have a color match function where if you have two clips from like, let's say an interview side by side, you can match one to the other using Premiere's automatic match function. And it does a pretty good job and it's pretty cool. Under the HSL secondary tab, we can actually go in and handpick a color. So let's say we want to grab this mountain range. We can go ahead and grab that color using the color picker tool and then we can come back and use all these temperature tools that you find under the basic correction tab and you have a couple other color wheel options under here as well so as you can see i could change just the color temperature of just the mountain range and if you don't select it all like let's say you can just go ahead and add this to the selection you can basically make sure you have all selected then you can make minor tweaks from there so let's say it's too warm in your opinion you can just make it a little bit cooler but again, this is a pretty advanced tool that you most likely don't need to learn right off the bat, so I'm not going to go too in-depth with that either. Now, if you moved from a different editor to Premiere Pro and you wanted to add a vignette to your footage, you may have had to type a quick Google search up to find where it actually is located inside Premiere, and it's actually located under the Lumetri Color window, as you can see here. So if you don't know what a vignette is, it's basically shadows the corners and kind of brings a focus on the inward part of your footage or you can actually in premiere lighten up the edges and kind of like give it a cool artistic feel if that's what you're going for i use this tool quite a bit but it's good to be subtle with it because people will notice in a hurry if you use a vignette too strongly and it kind of just ruins the footage unless it's the creative style you're going for of course and that's basically all the tabs you have under the Lumetri color window. The reason I made this tutorial was to help you get started if color correcting just seemed too daunting to get into. Because I know when I first started, I was a little bit scared to get into it because I didn't know exactly what I was doing. And of course, I'm not the best color corrector in the world, but I do know enough to get my footage looking accurate and looking better overall. So I hope this tutorial helped you. If it did, let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful in any way, please remember to leave a like and don't forget to comment, subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss my next video. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and until next time guys, peace out.